finale, so comes the question that with the Undersea on their way, will Tyler end up destroying not just the Museum of Civilization, but every single memory that he's been trying to avoid for the last 20 years? Or will there be a moment where his mother, Clark, maybe even Kirsten, get to break through to him and stop the massacre that he could possibly be planning? Since one of the early episodes, we've been kind of left in limbo of what happened to Miranda. And in this episode, we get our answer. She died. But before she died, she decided to make the sacrifice that included getting infected by Jim, who she was supposed to do that conference with, and talking to Hugo, the pilot of that airplane that was left on the strip. And because of her, nobody was left on that plane. Nobody left that plane. And Seven City was allowed to grow into the community that Elizabeth Miles and Clark have ran successfully for over 20 years. In the second topic, it's focused on what's happening at Seven City Airport as the preparations for Hamlet begin. At this point, Kirsten is fully aware that Clark is not the type who wants to let them go willingly. However, she has no desires to stay at this place. And on top of that, she has no desire to watch Elizabeth and Tyler have this like mini Cold War because Tyler's in his feelings about what happened in the past. For most people, whether it's Kristen herself or even Alex, getting to see your parents again, getting to interact with them, or even if you want to bring Clark into a situation, getting to know somebody who played a role in your upbringing, that is a privilege. One that with Kristen losing Jeevan, one with her parents not being that invested in her life, with her losing Arthur, and just losing Sarah in this episode, her mind is of the perception that Tyler's a spoiled little brat and he has to get over whatever happened in the past and kind of reconcile who Elizabeth was at that time of trauma for her. Never mind Clark when the world was ending. That's not necessarily who they are now. And Tyler's very much stuck on his childlike perception of what happened rather than fully taking in the view of how complicated things were. Which, when you think about it, is kind of strange considering he will have kids use mines strapped to their chest to blow up people. Yet, when it comes to the innocence of that guy who got shot by Miles, he sees all the adults in his life as evil. It's kind of twisted, but again, when it comes to Tyler, we it when it comes to Tyler, it's been established that he's a bit of a holier than thou type of person, and because of that, that's how he tries to hold on to his power and hold on to his belief that he is ultimately a good person and even though he doesn't like to claim the role of quote-unquote the prophet, you can tell that he definitely sees himself as such. But he's done with the, he's dealt with the wrong one this time, and Kristen decides she's going to make Elizabeth Gertrude, make Tyler Hamlet, and if they won't talk to each other in any type of normal sense, they will talk to each other through Shakespeare. And with that, you also have Clark decide he's going to become the king, and... This ultimately leads to a reconciliation of sorts. One that maybe doesn't put Clark and Tyler in the best place just because of what Clark has said out loud. But at the very least, it does finally give Tyler that kind of confrontation where he can't hold on to his version of events in terms of his own memories. And he has to accept that his mother was much more than the person who he wants to keep painting her as in order to perhaps victimize himself. She is somebody who herself struggled with Arthur in their relationship. Someone who struggled with with the world ending, trying to find a new purpose since, unlike Miles, she didn't have engineering knowledge to power up this place. Unlike Clark, she didn't have the kind of presence and speeches in order to inspire people and create a community. She had to reinvent herself quickly, otherwise it wouldn't just be a change in terms of the end of the world when it comes to the outside world, but also the end of the world in terms of who she formerly was in life as an actress of somewhat prominence 
and now having to figure out with a child on hand how to keep him safe while also maintaining some type of structure, some type of value in her life. And perhaps considering all that she was afraid of, that's why she notes that if Tyler would have asked her to, she would have left with him and started a whole new life rather than struggle to try to maintain some semblance of her old one at Severn City Airport. And it seems in her saying that and it feeling genuine to Tyler and the Hamlet performance, they truly healed the relationship. And she, in fact, does end up leaving Seven City Airport by the end of the episode. So while things end on a good note for Tyler, Clark, and Elizabeth, there was a moment where it seemed things could have went left. Not necessarily with those three, but more so Tyler's underlings, the undersea. For while Tyler's reconciling with his mother and his quote-unquote uncle, that hasn't led to him telling any of the undersea that they can stop making beacons for the Station Eleven to come down and crash at Seven City Airport. Luckily, Kirsten sees one of the members, Haley, and she stops her by showing her a copy of Station Eleven and reading to her. But while that stops the other undersea from doing anything, we're not really told how. It's strange in a way. Haley stops, and apparently none of the other ones who probably also have minds decide it's time for them to go on next. Though, who knows, maybe Haley was supposed to be the first one, and once she's done, then the other one's supposed to cascade and blow up different parts of the airport. The whole plan isn't really made clear. Tyler doesn't talk about it. Haley doesn't talk about it. So we're just left with a bunch of assumptions. But one thing we know for a fact is, Jeevan, the traveling doctor, he went to Seven City Airport to address not just Clark's burns from trying to save the Museum of Civilization, but also Sari who had a heart attack. Now, unfortunately, there's not much he can do for Sarah since at this point she's ready to go, but he does stay with her as she passes away, and he also stays in terms of watching the Traveling, Sym traveling, Sym uh, watching the traveling Symphony perform. After all, let's not forget, the thing we met Jeevan doing is him watching King Lear, so he possibly is a Shakespeare fan. However, what he, poss what he probably didn't know was that Kirsten was a director, and when he decides he wants to watch the cast's after party and then kind of mourn Sarah, he turns around after Kirsten deals with Haley, and then he sees the girl that he hasn't seen in almost 20 some odd years. This leads to a very heartfelt reunion between them, and it's probably something that Kristen needed in order to not just let go of her past trauma and maybe regrets, but maybe also Giovanni needed that as well. For while when we see him in modern time year 20, he's not necessarily dwelling on the regret of not looking for Kristen or anything like that, he does mention as the two talk that he talks about her often, especially to his kids, and she's become a little bit of a hero or else like notable figure in their lives. And I would even add in, with seeing Jeevan getting to let that part of her past go, I think that even allows her to let the reins loose when it comes to Alex and not needing her to be close anymore. And granted, you can definitely see when it comes to Haley that Kristen was possibly trying to recruit her to be the new Alex, but Haley wasn't for that. She already has latched on to Tyler, so she doesn't need Kristen. But at the very least, with Jeevan being alive, I feel like there could be the chance that Kristen may now be able to really let go of people and learn how to say goodbye, since now goodbye is no more like an end to the relationship, but more so an end to just seeing them for maybe a little while. So the first highlight is the miseducation of Tyler and the Undersea. And I say miseducation just because when it comes to a Tyler and even Chris in the point, you can see in a way how they're stunted in a sense part of their life. And no matter how much they dwell on it, they don't get to the facts of what happened, but more so the, the feeling that they had. But keeping it just to Tyler, you can definitely tell when it comes to both Clark and, and Elizabeth, 
all he can dwell on is what they didn't do and t what part of that man's murder that they were part of and not helping him. And because of that, he has blocked out almost every good thing they've done or even a the good they've done for all these people in this community and mainly just honed in on the evils that they did. And with that in mind, you can see when it comes to the undersea, his miseducation, when it comes to his own life, he passed on to them and made them, I won't say hateful, but definitely all that anger that he usually kind of keeps self-contained, he spread that to them and that's what allows them to be suicide bombers when it comes to going to Pain Tree and killing their grandparents or even having Haley come to where Seven City is and possibly kill herself in order to take out the Traveling Symphony. Now, would I say that Haley has been re-educated and is probably not on that path still? No. However, with Tyler healing, and it seems reconciling with Elizabeth to the point where he can move past his trauma and see her as a person, as a whole. Maybe there's a chance that with Elizabeth going with Tyler, with the huge swath of the undersea we see, possibly they can also heal in terms of their feelings of abandonment by their parents, possibly dealing with the trauma they went to, through in case their parents want somebody who abandoned them but were killed. And maybe just maybe like how Elizabeth was part of building a community when it comes to Seven City Airport when it with Clark and Miles maybe with Tyler she can do the same with the undersea and make it so in that factory area that they're in perhaps they can make a whole new world that without the trauma of before day zero they can maybe revive society in a way that can progress toward a more better future. The next highlight is just establishing how Miranda's life ended. Miranda, her voice is more part of this show than her presence. Since Station Eleven is the foundation for Tyler's whole philosophy of life and also is pretty much how both Tyler and Kirsten got through all the traumatic moments of the first few years. So she deserved to have a proper ending and I'm glad that just as a final like punch, we learned not only did she help save Tyler and also Kirsten mentally and emotionally, but she physically saved the lives of Uncle Clark. She helped save the life of Elizabeth and also Tyler when you think about it. And let's also add in even though Seven City is very self-contained, at the same time, we can't discount Miles' knowledge of how he got that whole airport running and how maybe that could allow for other, other places like St. Deborah by the Sea and other places on the wheel to possibly expand and use some of that technology and learn about it in order to replicate it. So while Miranda is kind of this small character you can't deny that her influence, her work in Station Eleven, and her work in convincing Hugo not to let those people off the plane, it is essential for everything we see in Year 20 to happen. The last highlight is just Jeevan and Kristen reuniting. It's one of those feel-good moments, especially since while you do have to recognize that those two didn't know each other that long, maybe a year or two at best, there's no denying the impact they had on each other's lives. It is because of Jeevan that Kirsten got a stable adult figure in her life. One that wasn't like her parents who was largely absent or like Arthur who was larger in life and seemed almost flawless. Jeevan gave her a, re a realistic adult who had leadership potential, who definitely did his best to take care of her but he also didn't really hide his flaws. His flaws were laid bare before her, whether you want to talk about Frank calling him Levin Jeevan, or Jeevan just making it clear that he can't be like Superman and do everything for Kirsten while she's just a child. 
And I think, in a way, she appreciated that more than he possibly knows, since it allowed her, when it comes to meeting Sarah and others, for her to work with them on equal grounds, and even understand them beyond the way Tyler kind of got stuck for most of his life. Now, in terms of the flip side, I think when it comes to Jeevan, Kristen holding him accountable and really confronting who he is, similar to how Kristen did with Tyler, it allowed him to break the cycle that he was in in his life. It forced him to recognize that he can't, as soon as things require him to show real effort, just abandon what's going on. He has to stick around, he has to put in the work. And then when it comes to people, he has to learn how to communicate in a way that requires conflict and resolution. He can't just, as soon as the criticisms come, then decide it's time to go because he's not liked anymore, he's not loved anymore, he doesn't have a purpose. No. People go through things. People go through arguments. And eventually, you're going to have to face the fact that the only time that people really try to argue with you is when they want you to stick around. It's when they get silent is when they're trying to plan a life without you. And I think if it wasn't for Kirsten, he wouldn't have learned that lesson and definitely wouldn't have the family that seems rather good based off of what we've seen.